I'm sure you have heard people saying that uh, you need to receive Jesus Christ. So now the question today is going to be, what does it mean to receive Jesus Christ? What does it mean to receive Jesus Christ? Many terms used in Christianity can be confusing to new believers or those seeking to know more about Jesus. And one such phrase recurs often, receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. What exactly does it mean to receive Jesus? Since Jesus lived, died, and rose again over 2,000 years ago, how can we receive him now? In the book of John, chapter 1, verse 11 to 12, uh, the Bible says, He came unto his own, and his own received it, uh, received him not. But as many as received him, to, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Hmm. So this passage speaks of receiving Jesus and defines the term, He who is Jesus came to that which was his own. Who was that his own? It is most probably talking about the Jews. But his own did not receive him. What did the Jews do? They killed Jesus and they denounced him. You remember, they said, we have no king but Caesar. And they denied Jesus. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. And John equates receiving Jesus with believing in him, which results in one uh, becoming a child of God. So receiving Jesus has to do with faith. We trust who Jesus is and what he has done on our behalf. You understand that Jesus died for your sins. He died. He did not die for his sins. It was you who were supposed to be on that cross. But Jesus said, no, let me go on that cross for his sake. Let me take his sins. Let me die on, the be- on, on behalf of that sinner. And he did that for you. And when you trust that, then now that is what we call receiving. And when we receive... Let me tell you something. When you receive a package, we take it to ourselves. When a, when a, a running back receives the football, he pulls it to himself and clings to it. When we receive Jesus, we take to him, uh, we take him to ourselves and cling to the truth about him. So when you hear, "Have you received Jesus?" It basically means, "Have you believed and put that?" Uh, idea and that 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 uh, understanding that jesus died for your sins have you put it in your heart have you believed in this you see like the way you can hear some people saying i i have a lot of faith in that man i know he can do that work i believe in him it is in my heart i know that guy is a good carpenter that guy is a good plumber It is in you. It is in your heart. You believe. It's exactly the same concept. Have you believed that Jesus died for your sins? So to receive Jesus as our Savior means we look to him and him alone as the one who forgives our sin, who mends our relationship with God and provides us uh, entrance to heaven. And to reject him as the Savior means we either don't believe that we need salvation or are looking to another deliverer. Scripture is very plain. However, that salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind, but by which we must be saved. The book of Acts 4 verse 12 tells us that. And to receive Jesus as our Lord means we let go of the lesser gods we have built in our lives around. We may know the facts about Jesus as a detailed in the Bible, we can even acknowledge the truth of those facts without being a part of God's family. We cannot receive Jesus as Lord without displacing the idols in our lives. Some of those idols are, for example, power, popularity, wealth, comfort that we we trust to provide us with purpose and strength. Even you can 
idolize yourself you can even idolize maybe your maybe a doctor and you say oh this doctor i put all my trust in him what about god yes you you're supposed to go to the hospital that's okay but you the doctor only treats but god heals you see there are so many things that you put in ourselves which have become our gods i've even seen people idolizing the bible you know when i talk about this most people might wonder and say how do you say the bible can be idolized have you heard of people who sleep with their bible as or, or under the pillow so that they cannot have bad dreams and things like that so they are putting their trust in the bible instead of god you see that's idolizing anything which comes bef- uh, in front or w- which which comes between you and god it's an idol your trust your faith should be in god alone all right and jesus described the need to follow him wholeheartedly he said in the book of luke chapter 9 verse 23 whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me you must deny everything if your job wants you to go against god then you must deny and say god is going to provide for me if your friends they want you to go against god then you must deny and tell them no friends it has come to a conclusion now that i must follow god i must do what is right and walk in the ways of salvation and follow the lord who saved me you see when jesus visited his uh, hometown of nazareth the people there did not believe he was anything other than the son of mary and joseph the bible tells us in the book of uh, uh, matthew uh Matthew chapter 13 verse 54 to 58 it says and when he was come into his own country he taught them in their synagogue in so much that they were astonished and said where has this man this wisdom this mighty works is is not this the carpenter's son is not his mother called Mary and his brethren you see how they are taking Jesus And also the Bible tells us the same in the book of John uh, chapter 6 verse 41 to 42 it says the Jews then murmured at him because he said I am the bread which came down from heaven and is and uh, they said is not this Jesus the son of Joseph whose father and mother we know how is it then that he said I came down from heaven you see these people they accepted him as a local carpenter but rejected him as a promised messiah many people to do today do a similar thing they accept jesus as a good moral teacher a role model or even a prophet who can teach us about god but they stop short of receiving him as their personal lord and savior they do not commit their faith to him they just want to say oh he was a good prophet He was a good teacher, he was a good man. He's a role model. He he was a good guy. Basically, if you follow what Jesus was saying, you will live a morally upright life. But they don't want to believe him as the Lord and Savior. Guys, you have to understand, receiving Jesus is a matter of one's eternal destiny. The Bible says in the book of John 3:16 to 18, "For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish" but have eternal life for god did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but to save the world through him whoever believes in him is not condemned but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the one and only god's son are you seeing this one so if you don't believe in jesus then you're already condemned because this world is condemned already you're a sinner not just your sin you only adding sin to sin your father adam already was a sinner and he transferred to all his children we are we are born from adam and in adam all people die remember in the book of genesis chapter 5 verse 3 it says that adam lived uh, a cup uh, i think one uh, 900 years and something 930 years and he begot a son 
in his own image and his own likeness and called his name Seth. So this child was in the image of Adam. What kind of image was that? It was the image of a fallen man, the image the image of a sinner. So if we are all in Adam, then it means we are all sinners. We're only right now adding sin to sin. And that's why we need to be in Jesus because Jesus is righteous. By one man, Adam, all fell. All became sinners. But there's good news. By one man, Jesus, all can become righteous. And to receive Jesus means we acknowledge that he is he who he said he is. All right? You have to acknowledge Jesus is the one exactly who he says he is that is who he is let's look at the book of first john chapter 5 verse 10 he says he that believeth on the son of god has the witness in his in himself who is that witness the holy spirit you cannot believe that jesus is god unless you have the holy spirit he that believeth not god has made him a liar because he believeth not the record that god gave of his son you see also when you look at uh, matthew chapter 27 verse 43 it says he trusted in god let him deliver him now if he will if he will have him for he said i am the son of god you see jesus is the son of god and also the book of john 20 verse 31 but these are written that you might believe that jesus is the christ the son of god and that believing you might have life through his name. So where is life? Life is found in the name of Jesus. He is the son of God who took on the human form. The Bible tells us uh, in the book of Philippians chapter 2 uh, verse uh, Philippians chapter 2 verse 6 to 8 it says who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God. You see? but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. So Jesus, he was equal with God. He's equal with God. And he did not want to put upon himself that when he was here on earth. He humbled himself. And took the form of a man and he was born of a virgin the bible tells us the story you know uh, from the book of luke chapter 1 verse 26 to 38 you can read the story of how jesus was born of a virgin meaning the father was god and he lived a perfect life the bible tells us in the book of hebrews chapter 4 verse 15 for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Jesus was tempted, but he had no sin. He lived a perfect life, and also he accomplished in full God's plan to rescue mankind from sin. In the book of Matthew 1 verse 18 says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was exposed to Joseph before they came together. She was found with the child of the Holy Ghost. And also 1 Peter 1.20, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in this last time for you. Jesus was foreordained even before the foundation of the world that he would be born in this world so that he can come and save mankind. And John Chapter 19, verse 30 says, When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. My friends, what was finished? The payment for sin. He paid everything. Everything for us. Everything. So that we don't need to pay for anything. He completed the whole law. He lived a perfect life so that we don't need to live that life that we just need to be in Him. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, we will find ourselves living a good life. We don't, we don't try to go to heaven by our own works. There's nothing that we can do by trying to live an upright life to go to heaven. Look at the Bible says, 
in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 18 to 21 and all this and all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself you see God was in Christ so you see Jesus had the whole Godhead in him Father the Son and the Holy Spirit it is basically God who died for our sins God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God, for he has made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness, the righteousness of God in him. Are you made righteous? Do you want to be righteous? Because that is what God brought to us through Jesus Christ. And to receive Jesus is to trust that his sacrifice on the cross completely paid for our sin and to believe that God raised him from the dead. This is what the gospel is. I'm sure you've heard People say, have you believed the gospel? What is the gospel? The gospel is just believing that Jesus died for our sins. He was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Let me read for you what the gospel is. 1 Corinthians 15, uh, 1 through 4. It says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which you received, and wherein you stand, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I delivered unto you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That is the full gospel. That Christ died for our sins. He didn't die for nothing. He died for our sins. And he was buried, taking away our sin to the grave. And he rose again by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's basically the gospel. And when you believe that, then you take the life of Jesus. You're basically buried with him and rose with him. And now the one who lives in you is not you actually. It is God who lives in you. And your life is hidden secure by God in Christ Jesus. 2 Corinthians um, 5, let me show you something here. 5 verse 18 to 21 says, And all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. God has done what? He has reconciled. We were yet, we were enemies with God. But he reconciled us to himself through the man Jesus and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world the world unto himself not imputing their trespasses unto them you see when you're in Christ when you believe in Jesus God will not impute any sin on you he will blot out every record of sin from you and will give you a new life, a new heart, a new mind. He will transform you. Let me continue. Not imputing their trespasses unto them, and has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. I had to repeat this so that I can show you that, my friends, we are reconciled to God. God has reconciled himself to us. All right? Are you seeing this one? And also when we look at uh, uh, 
1 uh, Corinthians 5, 15 verse 20, it says, But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruit of them that slept. Jesus is risen. He's no longer dead. 2 Timothy 2, 8, it, sell, it tells us, Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. The Apostle Paul, he gave us the gospel which was he was revealed to him by Jesus. And that gospel is that Jesus died for us. He was buried and rose again. You see, there are several gospels in the Bible. There's the gospel of the kingdom, which is all speaking about the millennial kingdom. And this is what Jesus was speaking. He was saying, talking and speaking to the Jews about the millennial kingdom. And that's why uh, he was saying, repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He wanted to establish the kingdom of heaven, the millennial kingdom. But uh, they could not agree and they killed him. So Jesus died, he rose again, and then he revealed a different gospel, which is a gospel of grace, the gospel of our salvation in this dispensation. And after the rapture happens, that gospel is over then there will be another gospel which is called the everlasting gospel which will be preached by an angel as written in the book of Revelation chapter 12 I believe is from verse 6 that an angel will be preaching another gospel which is the everlasting gospel saying that you should honor Jesus and don't deny him and things like that you can just go to Revelation chapter 12 verse 6 and read for yourself so we see this gospel was revealed and is the gospel that is supposed to save us right now and to receive Jesus is to recognize that we are sinners separated from a holy God have you recognized do you know that you're a sinner I'm sure many say oh I'm not a sinner what have I done but the Bible tells us in Romans 3 verse 23 for all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God all means even you and if you're a sinner what does the bible say about sinners romans 6 verse 23 for the wages of sin is death so if you're a sinner then you're supposed to die but the gift of god is eternal life through jesus christ our lord so if you don't want to die then receive the gift there's an option the wages of sin is death yes you're supposed to die but then there is an option why would you die while there is an option my friend Ephesians 2 uh, verse 1 to 3 it says uh, let me read for you and you listen and you he has quickened who are dead in trespasses and sins what is quickening changed you transformed you who are dead in your trespasses and sins, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But he transformed us. He changed us. He made us new. My friends, have you been made new? Or are you still there dying in your sins? Are you still there in your sins? To receive Jesus is to call out to him in faith, trusting that only his blood can cleanse us from sin and restore us to a right relationship with God. Ephesians 2 verse 4 to 10 it tells us exactly about this it tells us this Ephesians 2 4 to 10 but God who is rich in mercy God is very rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us even when we were dead in sins he has quickened us together with Christ by grace are you saved and has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Are you seeing this point? The moment you believe, you are quickened, you are changed, and you get inside Christ. 
you are in Christ. And where Jesus is sitting, that's exactly where you're sitting, in heavenly places. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Salvation is a gift. No one should be able to tell you that you need to buy salvation. It is a gift. It is not of yourselves. You can't work for it. It is something that you're given freely. And after that, after we are given salvation, then verse 10 tells us, For we are his workmanship. Mm, Now, after we get salvation, we are his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. Now, after we have gotten salvation, we are supposed to do good works, do what is right, walk in the ways of God. That is why we are not saved and go to heaven immediately. We are his workmanship. We are to bring others to Christ. We are to preach to others and tell them that Jesus loves them. And 1 John chapter 1, verse 7 says, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus his son cleanses us from all sin if we do what? if we walk in the light because Jesus is in the light God is in the light we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus his son cleanses us from all sin we don't cleanse ourselves the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sins Let me also show you another verse in the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 19 to 22. It says, Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. We're not entering the holiest by our blood, by our works, by our goodness. We are entering by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he has consecrated for us through the veil that is to say his flesh. Let me explain on verse 20. By a new and living way. So now we are not living in the old way. But we have been consecrated through the veil that is to say his flesh. So the flesh of Jesus is the veil. Is the one which is hiding us. We are behind the veil. We are behind the body of Jesus. Nobody can see us. Even when God the Father looks at us from up in heaven, he basically sees the veil which is the body of Jesus, his son. He doesn't see us and our lowly self. He sees Jesus and he says, oh, is is that Keith? No, 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 that's my son, Jesus. And he can say, no, I cannot condemn my son. That's why the Bible says there is no longer condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Let me continue Hebrews uh, 10.21. It says, And having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Look at that verse, my friends. We have a high priest who is Jesus. Jesus is our high priest. What is the work of a priest? to speak on behalf of the people. Jesus speaks on the behalf of you and me. And the Bible tells us that we need to draw near with a true heart. Don't draw near saying, oh, I'm really afraid. Maybe because I, I lied yesterday. I don't know if he loves me. No. Draw near with a full heart in full assurance of faith. It's just like in a family, a family setting, down here on earth if maybe you you break the remote of the TV do you go to your father scared and saying father please become my dad again I I broke the remote of course it's a bad thing all you need to do you tell him dad I'm sorry for breaking the remote Uh, I will not do it again I will try very best the best that I can 
to always be careful because he is your father and you're in full assurance that he can never deny you whether you break remotes you break TVs you 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 break the car you do what he is your father he loves you and if you go to him and tell him oh please become my father again because uh, i i i i i i wet the mattress sleeping i peed on the on the mattress or, or i did something wrong or i i spoiled this and that and you tell him, become my father again your father will probably laugh or think that you're mad how can i become your father again i'm already your father you have assurance how much more with our father in heaven he tells us to draw to him in full assurance of faith having our hearts sprinkled from evil conscience get away from evil conscience all the time thinking that you're going to hell get away from that evil conscience and our bodies should be washed with pure water that water is Christ he changed us he made us new and now we know to whom we belong okay we know to whom we belong so don't be afraid don't be afraid all right now to those who receive Jesus by faith they are given the right to become the children of God children born not of natural descent or of human decision or a husband's will but born of God the bible tells us in the book of john chapter 1 verse 12 to 13 but as many as received him to them gave he power to become the sons of god even to them that believe on his name which were born not of blood not of the will of the flesh not of the will of man but of god you become a child of god not because somebody told you or your mother or father got you into the no it is because of god it is a spiritual birth a spiritual birth all right now when you receive jesus jesus as our savior god sends us the gift okay the gift of his holy spirit now this holy spirit enters our spirits and begins to transform us to be more like Christ i know there are people who say i i i will stop smoking i will stop sinning first and then i come and be saved no the bible tells us come as you are because after you are saved the holy spirit will get inside you and he will start transforming you clearing out your old behavior sanctifying you and cleansing you and changing you is like a tutor is like when you adopt a child into a family and then there is a, a tutor or there is a housemaid who is supposed to train that new child into the ways of this new family is telling them okay uh, here in this family we wake up at 8 am not at 10 am like maybe you used to do before here in this house we we are always neat we we make our bed here in this house we we brush our teeth this is what we do so now since you are adopted into this family we are we have to teach you new ways so you're not taught from the outside and then come into the house you first get into the house and then now you start being t- taught by the tutor and that tutor according to christianity is the holy spirit all right now the bible tells us about this tutor and he says uh let me let me first read for you romans 8 verse 29 it says for whom did he foreknow he also did predestinate to be for conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren you see immediately you are supposed to start being conformed into the image of jesus and now john chapter 14 verse 26 it says but the comforter the comforter is who which is the holy ghost whom the father will send in my name he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever i have said unto you the work of the holy spirit is to teach us and to bring everything to remembrance and to 
change us so that we can be in the image of Christ. And the Bible in the book of Luke, chapter 24, verse 29, uh, 49, it says, And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endured with power from on high. Who is that promise? The Holy Spirit. Jesus promised that I will not leave you as orphans, but I'll send you a helper who will abide with you forever. That helper is the Holy Spirit who will be guiding each one of us into the ways of God. You see? And also Ephesians uh, 1, 13 to 14, it says, In whom also you trusted, after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed, what happened? You were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. The moment you believed in Jesus, the Holy Spirit was sealed in you. And what is the purpose of the Holy Spirit being sealed in us? Verse 14 tells us, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Hmm. Now we understand the reason we have the Holy Spirit is the earnest, is the assurance of our inheritance that we will inherit with Jesus. We are children of God until that redemption of our bodies. All right? And Philippians chapter 2, verse 12 to 13 tells us, Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there are people who stop there and they say, oh, I need to work out my salvation with fear and trembling. It is me who has to do something to keep my salvation or else I will lose it. But look at verse 13. It says, For it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do, for his good pleasure. Now, who is working? It is God. It is basically like uh, just saying that uh, God has installed a new software inside you, which is supposed to work in you. So all you need to do is just relax your muscles, relax your legs, relax your hands. Stop trying to do something and uh, God inside you is trying to do something else. Walk in the spirit so that you don't fulfill the desires of the flesh. All right? Jesus called this transaction, which is uh, believing in him, born again. He called this being born again. Let me read for you in the book of John, chapter 3, verse 3 to 8. The Bible says, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, you must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but cannot tell where it cometh and whither it goes, so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Now let me explain a little bit on this. Born of water and born of spirit. What happens when a woman is carrying a baby in the womb and the water breaks? That's the beginning of life on earth. When the water breaks, that's the beginning of life. So you're born into this world. Water breaks. And now, born in spirit, when you believe in Jesus, you're born in spirit. Does this make some sense? When you believe in Jesus, you're born in spirit. That's so clear. Extremely clear. Now, friends, something you have to understand is that Jesus gave this explanation 
he explained to us about this about being born again not being born in the will of man but being born in the will of god when a baby is born a new creature emerges that did not previously exist over time that baby begins to look and act like the parent it is when we are born of the spirit by receiving jesus when we become children of god and begin to look and act more like our heavenly father the book of matthew chapter 5 verse 48 tells us be ye therefore perfect even as your father which is in heaven is perfect we should start taking the shape and behaviors of our father and second corinthians 5 verse 17 says therefore if any man be in christ he is a new creature new new means new all the things are passed away behold all things are become new and also second corinthians 7 verse 1 having therefore these promises dearly beloved let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit perfecting holiness in the fear of god we are new let us perfect holiness ephesians 5:1 it says be ye for god as dear children does that make some sense now as a white man do something receiving jesus christ into our lives is more than adding him to an already cluttered priority list he does not offer the option of being only a part of our lives when we receive him we pledge to him our allegiance and look to him as the undisputed lord of our lives the book of luke chapter 6 46 tells us and why call ye me lord lord and you do not do the things which i say How can you say you've pledged allegiance to God and you don't do what he says and what he likes? John verse uh, chapter 15 14 says, "You are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you." Are you a friend of God? Do you do what he commands? Do we still disobey his commands at times because we are still in our human nature? We are still Uh, not our body is not yet redeemed our spirit and our soul is redeemed already is already purchased but our body our flesh is not yet changed our body is not yet saved it will be saved or redeemed on that day of redemption so at some point we'll still find ourselves disobeying his commands as the bible tells us in the book of first john uh, chapter uh, 1 8 to 10 it says If we say that we have no sin we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us but if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness if we say that we have not sinned we make him a liar and his word is not in us now let me clarify this one because there are so many people who say oh we we can lose our salvation no the confessing of sin which is uh, being spoken by John here it is in the aspect of already a continuing relationship with our father in heaven let me give you an example of uh, how we are on a family here on earth once you're born into a family your father and mother they become your permanent parents and you're permanent in that home But time and time again you will do something wrong in the family maybe you disobey your parents in one way or another and uh, all you need to do is to confess and tell your father dad I'm sorry for it I will try and be better child next time that is exactly the same way we are already in a family of God and if we don't confess what we are doing small small things even in our natural lives here what really happens uh, we become or we get into a bad relationship with our parents all right and uh, they will feel bad about what we are doing and whenever we ask them or something they might not really want to repeat or answer or do 
That's the same thing to our Father in heaven. To always tell him whenever we do something wrong. Right? The Holy Spirit within us always draws us to repentance. So that our close fellowship with God is always restored. As the Bible tells us in the book of Psalms 51 verse 7. Purge me with his soap and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. He purges those he loves. He changes those he cares for. And uh, you being a child of God, he's going to change you. He's going to do good unto you when you ask him. Alright? Receiving Jesus is the beginning of a lifetime of discovery and an eternity of bliss in heaven with him. As the Bible tells us in the book of John 3 verse 36. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life. But the wrath of God abides on him. Of course, you can also go and read Revelation 21 and 22. It will tell you much. So guys, I don't know if you have understood what exactly it means to receive Jesus Christ. It's basically just to put your faith and trust and loyalty and allegiance to Christ, believing that he did what he did for you. That is dying for you, buried and rising again for you so that you can be saved. And that's the end of our today's Bible study lesson. Hope it was a blessing to you. And remember, you can always download this podcast to listen later offline. Share to your friends and family. And please don't forget to favorite our podcast and subscribe to our channel so that you can always be notified whenever I post a new Bible study. And if you like to get saved or you need a step by step Bible verses of the Lord our salvation so that you can well preach to your friends or family, or maybe you just feel led to support our ministry or buy some cool Christian merchandise, kindly visit our website, kids.com, for more details and breakdown. Otherwise, I hope to see you soon in the next one.